Hello world champions, I'm John Ward and this is Breaking News with John Ward at Breaking News. Breaking news. The 2024 election is underway with the Iowa caucuses, the quadrennial opening contest of the United States presidential election primary season. This is normally for both the Democrat and Republican parties, but this year, the former have decided that instead, quote, voting on candidates will be done exclusively via mail-in ballots from January 12th until Super Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. Breaking news with John Ward, breaking news can only speculate in a non-actionable way as to why the Democrats have opted for this unorthodox approach, and that non-actionable speculation is this. They're cheating! Of course, the lack of news on the left in no way lessens the singular drama around the Republican projections. The big question on everyone's 5G robo minds is the ominous ecliptical twin umbra of President Donald Trump's cash and prizes hovering over the convention like the balls of Damocles. What would Iowa reveal about American sentiment towards Trump? And to the shock of Bill Kristol and literally no one else at all, the binary star system that is the Trumpian metascrotum slammed through the voting block like a populist love hammer against the anvil of absolution, taking a girthy 51% of the vote and winning all but Johnson County, which is 70% Democrat and hosts the University of Iowa. Now I'm not saying Trump lost Johnson County barely because some liberal college students pranked the Republican vote, but I am strongly implying it while not directly saying so. But as you know, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, I just assumed your genders, despite his resounding success, again, the rhinoceri continue to send the clear message that Donald Trump is not welcome, despite the will of their constituency, because that would mean winning. But per the results of the caucus, their options are running thin, as the obvious hopefuls have long since crashed and burned. Ron DeSantis is still around, apparently, watching drying paint get bored, watching Ron DeSantis. Nikki Haley was going strong until Nimrata Randhawa showed up, who is Nikki Haley, which is weird. And Vivek Ramaswamy, by far the most entertaining of the bunch, seemed more interested in a nod as Trump's VP until Trump himself put a stop to the ankle biting. Ramaswamy has now officially suspended his campaign. Trump dominates the field. For the sake of completely baseless guessing, which is what the news is for, on the left there was a brief glimmer of manhood with Robert Kennedy Jr., which then quickly soured with a very different glimmer of manhood, the revelation of his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. Gavin Newsom is an obvious heir apparent, but like DeSantis, he's pulled the trigger too early and needs another four years to really lock down that relationship with his financiers. China. This leaves the laughably incompetent sitting VP Kamala Harris, who even Democrats don't seem to consider a serious candidate. So in summary, as it currently stands, we are headed for an election where no one who the American people actually want to run will be allowed to run, and if they somehow are allowed to run, then the vote will not be trusted, and if by some miracle said vote is nevertheless peaceably upheld, then a far more sinister resentment will set in and not begin, but simply add to and amplify the rot that is and has been eating away at the foundations of American culture for decades, Western culture for centuries. What I'm saying is, it's going to be a good time. That's it for today. I'm John Ward, and this has been Breaking News with John Ward Breaking News. Until next time, remember, you're a world champion. Don't let your memes be dreams.